Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Israel Hawkins. Well, we start off our broadcast today with a report from the Seven Hills of Rome, that area. The Vatican's located. That's right. And, uh, And its leader, who is Pope Francis. Well, tens of thousands gathered in St. Peter's Square to celebrate Angelus. While in attendance, a gift was given as a way to mark the soon ending Roman Catholic year of faith that Francis will close out with a mass. The gift that was given to visitors were rosary beads. The 59 beads on the rosary were likened to 59 pills that strengthen the soul, said Pope Francis. Hmm. In his address, he said concerning the gift, that it provides spiritual support for our souls so we can spread love, forgiveness, and fraternity elsewhere. Now, he also warned his followers that Jesus warned his disciples about false prophets, Hmm. a warning still relevant today. He continued, nowadays there are many false savior who try to substitute Jesus, leaders in this world, fake saints, and personalities who wish to influence the hearts and minds of people especially the young. Interesting it used those words, hearts and minds. Almost as if he was directing it at something or someone. Or someone. I notice he used Savior as singular. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll see how that plays out. He continued, Jesus warned us about this, saying, don't follow them. He finished off his address by reminding the people to pray for persecuted saints, uh, reminding them that they are not alone, stating also that there are more of them being persecuted now than in the first centuries, and that when life gets challenging, Christians must trust in God and show perseverance. If I remember, the, the, the Christians were doing a lot of the persecution. In fact, the Roman Catholic Church was behind a lot of it in the time period even of the um, Holocaust. So I'm not really sure. Now, as a note, those rosary beads were given to the people uh, and they were reminded that they could pray the chaplet of divine mercy, which, by the way, is a series of repetitious prayers that came about as a result of a Catholic Polish sister who said she had visions and conversations with Jesus. Now, sometimes those memorized repetitious prayers are done over and over again during a course of nine repetitive days for different souls. Interesting. Uh, During one of Francis's daily morning masses, Francis talked about Christians who turn their faith into an ideology, saying that it makes people hostile and arrogant and pushes them away from their peers. And the root of such behavior, he said, is a lack of prayer. Uh, He added, uh, the faith becomes ideology and ideology frightens. Ideology chases away the people. It creates distances between people and it distances the church from the people. Uh, He continued, but it's a serious illness, this Christian ideology. Pope Francis also said there's a difference between praying and simply saying prayers and that people carried away by ideology don't pray, but simply used memorized prayers. Hmm. Probably like the, the Lord's Prayer or that chaplet of divine mercy that we just talked about. Yeah, he just told the people that that's, the beads were reminders to do that, and now he's saying so that they shouldn't use Don't memori- say repetitious prayers and then say repetitious prayers. It's a little bit confusing to me. Well, continuing on the subject of the pontiff, UIPN's Larry McGee has a story on the new pope's influence, that being Francis, and what's being called the Francis effect. Interesting. Uh, so, Larry, uh, is this Francis effect, is it real or is it just hype? The Francis effect is very real, and while it hasn't produced the righteousness, quietness, or assurance promised with regard to the leadership of Abel, 
Francis has, however, continued to increase in popularity. The infamous St. Peter's Square was more packed than ever this week for the new pontiff's weekly appearance, where parishioners are said to be surging back to the pews because of the new pope's actions. Back here in the States, things are also shifting as well. The U.S. Conference of Bishops is reported to be taking a new direction as they elect to their presidency the Archbishop of Louisville, Joseph Kurtz, to succeed their outgoing president, Timothy Dolan of New York. Both were interviewed recently to discuss questions regarding the state of Catholicism and their views regarding the reality of the Francis effect. Mr. Dolan says the reigning pope is definitely having an impact and the Catholic Church is changing because of his behavior. Catholic priests report that attendance at Sunday Mass are up. Confession lines are longer. Curiosity concerning Catholicism is increasing, and doling excitedly relates that even the collections are going up. That, he says, is good news. Archbishop Kurtz, making his first major debut, delivered a comment which offers an interesting view into the psychology of universalism and suggests a motive for the new pontiff's antics. Kurtz says, Many people are taken by the Pope's actions because we all want to be acknowledged. We all want to be loved and to belong. And there is a place in the Catholic Church for everyone. He believes that Francis's actions are a great message of the new evangelization. Shifting back to Dolan, who was questioned concerning the survey, which was recently sent to the world's one billion Catholics and why it was necessary, Dolan says, Francis is shrewd, and the survey was released in preparation for the Synod, which, was, which is a gathering of the Pope and the representatives of bishops from all over the world that takes place every two to three years. The theme for this Synod, due to be held in October, is marriage and family. Following that, Dolan was asked whether he believed his God has sent the big personality of Pope Francis out of concern for the Catholic Church, to which he replied, he would like to think so. His God is always concerned about the church, just as he was concerned about the people of Israel who are their forefathers. He says, all the popes have been gifts from God, including the latest Pope Francis, who was being held for his bewitching effect during a time when the days are at hand and the world is experiencing the true effect of every prophetic vision. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan Jeff, back to you. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm sure they like that part about more money coming in the church. Mm, I guess that must be where their heart is. Another infectious disease is gaining a foothold. Princeton University in New Jersey announced this week that it is going to use a vaccine not approved in the U.S. to fight an outbreak of meningitis. Now, this stuff sounds really nasty. A form of the brain infection has been spreading on campus. Now, this vaccine is already used in Europe, and Princeton got an emergency waiver to use it here in the United States. Now, Princeton officials announced that starting in early December, the vaccine will be available to undergraduates and graduates living in dormitories and for anyone else at the university with conditions that may make them vulnerable to the disease. In an interview with CBS News, Dr. William Schaffner from Vanderbilt University, who studies infectious diseases, said the Food and Drug Administration in that kind of emergency has developed the process where unlicensed drugs in that case, a vaccine can be introduced to be used just in that specific patient or in this particular public health circumstance. And that's why they're going to allow it to take place. Seven people at Princeton University have contracted meningitis B so far. Six out of the seven patients have recovered while the most recent case is still being hospitalized. Meningitis spreads through close contact, including sharing of food and drinks, but more commonly through coughing, kissing, and of course sneezing. It's very close contact, mm -hmm. okay. Dr. Schaff Schaffner uh, explained uh, what can happen to someone who is exposed to this infectious disease. He says uh, the person can become semi-comatose uh, or even comatose, and this can happen within a matter of not days, not weeks, but hours. Uh, so it can be a very, very serious infection. 
Now, students at Princeton have been following the news of the outbreak very closely. Student Emma Kurz was asked if she will get the meningitis B vaccine. She said, I think I will. I think I'd rather take a chance and try to be safe than to take a chance of being at high exposure. A couple of facts on the meningitis B infection. According to the CDC, uh, one in 10 people who contact meningitis will die from the disease and one in five will have permanent disabilities. Poor odds. Yes. Now, lastly today, a traffic stop near Taos, New Mexico last month led to a chase and fight that ended with a police officer opening fire on a minivan with a mother and her five children inside. What you're going to see in this video is 39-year-old Ariana Farrell arguing with the state trooper that pulled her over. But instead of turning off her vehicle as the trooper asks her to do, she takes off once again in the vehicle. Uh, bold move. The officer pulls her over again and tries to pull her out of the minivan. Well, her 14-year-old son eventually comes out and scuffles with the officer who tries to tase him. The situation escalates from there with the officer breaking one of the windows and shots being fired at the minivan uh, with all the children still inside and a, a backup officer also close to the line of fire. So it was really a lot of things going on at that that time take a look at this video to see what we're talking about tell you what to do yes, and you take off you understand what no, you just did that is what happened i off. said stop right there i'll be right back okay and you took off okay go ahead and turn around just turn around for me okay turn around for me there's going to be two other officers here in just a second turn around and face no, your vehicle no, ma'am listen to me don't please you said you were not <laughs> Tom, that was the raw dash cam footage there right. of the officer's vehicle that we just saw. Wow. So after a four-minute high-speed chase, Farrell pulled over in front of the Taos Hotel. She and her son were arrested. Now, as for the officers involved, they will have to defend their actions used against the New Mexico State Police policy, which prohibits the firing at or from a moving vehicle uh, if it puts the officers at risk or others at unreasonable risk. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to justify their moves. Right. Right. Well, Katan, our, the next thing here we're going to show our viewers is quite a bit different from that chaos, confusion and the violence we just saw in the last video. Mm -hmm. What we're going to hear now is the truth being told, wisdom in solving problems and questions that have puzzled, puzzled the scholars for years all explained, all of which will bring about a peaceful solution if followed. Now, that's definitely worth staying tuned for. What you can do is, if you haven't already, you can contact the House of Yahweh and request your prophetic word magazine and monthly newsletter. You can contact the House of Yahweh by writing them at P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas, 79604. You can call them at one 800 613-9494 or visit them on the web at www.yahweh.com or www.yisroelhawkins.com or email them at info at yahweh.com and all calls outside the United States, please dial the number on your screen. Don't go away. Up next is Yisro Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. And I'm Katana Alexander. Thanks for watching.